Okay, it's Joe here from Cheeky Sport, and I'm back for another legendary chat. Now, this one, this one is the one that brings me joy still, I can't lie. I've, uh, I've always found uh, his story interesting, and just to get the opportunity to chat to him, um, you know what I mean? I know he's training a lot at the moment, and I know there's a lot of good things happening again in his football career. So I'm proud to announce that I'm talking to the one, the only, current Toulouse <laughs> player, playing for Nottingham, Nottingham Forest on loan, Mr. John Bostock. How you doing, bro? Well, listen, after that intro, I'm doing great, bro. Yeah, listen, nah, that, thank that's you. legendary intro, man. I feel honoured to, to have that. So thank you, man. It's a pleasure to be here, bro. Listen, I'm a football fan, in it, And, and um, growing up in my time, I just feel like you were... I just used to find it amazing. And you was always a really nice guy. Like, I remember I used to come and watch um, Moses Swaby play for Crystal Palace quite a lot. Uh, my, my ball dreams were dead by then. Uh, so I used to come and watch and I'll watch like the older age group, which is Victor Moses, all those guys. But then you would still, sometimes I would see you playing as well. And I used to just think, yo, this kid's amazing, man. Like they always spoke of you, Ryan Hall and Victor. And there was a couple guys that they used to mention a lot for at the academy. And, um, and I just thought this guy's amazing. Uh, so I just wanted to talk uh, very quickly through some of your life because you've been able to like, do your own thing you've not really you know what i mean you've gone away you've done your own thing and i found you and i see that you're doing amazing things so why not talk to you do you know what i'm saying um i want to kick it off with the superstar talent that um you are and were as a young child you know professional debut for crystal palace at the age of 15 uh your time in palace amazing i'm talking like the youngest ever player to play in the first team and the youngest ever player at the time to start at Sellers Park. I mean, honestly, what is that like, man? What's that feeling? You know, bro, I look back on it, I think, wow, like, it's like my career has almost like been, obviously it's one career, but it feels like it's been compartmentalised because of the journey. It's been, un, it's been unorthodox. Mm. Like, if I could start again and, re, and write my story, I would never write it this way. Mm. But, you know, all things work together for good. So, um, anyway, looking back on it, when you start at a club, and that's the club that you support, and you go on to make your debut at the club you support, like I had a season ticket when I was five. Wow. You know, so I would go to every game, a little bag of sweets. Remember, this is before phones, so there's no kids like, getting distracted. Like, you're watching the game. Yeah. And the only, uh, only distraction is the programme. That's the only other thing. that You're watching the game or looking at the programme. So I was, like, raised on football. So season ticket for 10 years, and to make my debut at 15, it was... It was a dream come true, bro. It was a dream come true. I didn't know anything that would come with it, but in terms of a goal I set my, my, my mind on, that's what I wanted to achieve. Um, and yeah, by God's grace, I achieved it. So it was a quick start. A lot came quickly. And um, but ultimately, football was what I love to do. So I felt prepared. I felt like it was what I wanted. And uh, yeah, man, it was, it was, it was, it was a, a very fast start. Yeah, but so what intrigues me, bro, is that you, you sound like, you made your debut at 21, 22, 23, because you sound so focused. You're like, it's what I wanted to do. You was 15, mm. bro. Most people mm. at 15 don't even know, you know, if they're good at something, they're trying to figure it out. How could you, at such a young age, have already set your mind to play in the first um, team? Did you know you were going to play so young? What is the whole thinking of all of this? Well, I'm from South London. I grew up in Streatham, and five people got stabbed in my road in one year. And it was that whole time where, like, I couldn't, like, the people around me, like, I, look up, I looked up to, I moved to Camberwell when I was nine. So Camberwell right in between Bricks and the Peckham. It's an area where if you're not focused, you, you can go astray, you know. Um, and I didn't have any big brothers. I had three, two older sisters. So I didn't really have, obviously, I got my, my, my dad. Um, but in terms of the, the company around, if you're not focused, you'll, you'll get lost. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that right vision brings right discipline. So from young, I realized that I had, I had, I had, I had, a, I had, a, I had something to, was my escape plan almost. And so football was, was my gift. I didn't choose it, it chose me. So when I signed for Palace, I, <laughs> funny story, my dad used to coach tennis um, in Sutton. And after one tennis session, he heard all these kids screaming over the, uh, on the park. He went over to see it was, it was a trial for Crystal Palace, 200 kids. My dad said, look, my son plays football, can he come? He said, yeah, for sure. Oh, but how old is he? He said, he's six. Oh, no, 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 he's too young. He's come back when he's seven or eight. He said, oh, please, he's really good. Can he come? No, no, nah, nah, he can't come. So my dad, he walked away sad. And the guy said, all right, just bring him. We'll have a look. We'll see what he's like. 
So then the next week, my dad brought me back. And out of 200 kids, two of us got signed. But in order to sign, I had to say I was a year older. And so I signed, so the contract was done. <laughs> and then um, I told him after I was a year younger. So I always played up from young. So about at 13, I was playing 16s. 14, I was playing under 18s. And I made my debut for the first team before I even played a reserve match. So I knew at 14, I wanted to become the youngest player because I trained, I trained with the first time, with the first team for the first time when I was 14. 14. Under Peter, yeah, Peter Taylor, he brought me in for a session. Yeah, I even remember some of it. It was, it was, it was, it was fun. So I, I kind of had that mindset. Like I wanted to achieve that. I, I knew the goal. And so I knew with the right manager, with the right timing, it would, it, it would happen. So I had that and I worked towards it, you know. John, back then, you, you, know, every, you, you know, people call you John now. I know mm -hmm. you as Johnny, even though Johnny, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what we grew up. Like, bro, at that time, are you fathoming what you're doing here? 14 years old, you ain't even grown yet. You're, you're yeah. still growing as a human being. Can you explain to me when you were told that you're, you're, you're going to train with the first team, what, you know, what age group you was at beforehand? I'm guessing you was under 16s, right? So you're told... Well, yeah, I would, I would have been playing with this. So I, I, I played for the 18s. But I was under 14, under 15. I was under 14, I think. I must have been under 14. Yeah, under so, 14, just maybe under 15. So I, I, was, I was playing for the 18 when I was 14. So how'd you get, so what, what happens? What, what are you doing for Peter Taylor? This is Peter Taylor, you know. If anyone knows about football, knows that he's a respectable man in the, in the industry. Do you see what I'm saying? Like in the, in the sport. Ex-England manager. Mm. Ex-England manager. So what is making you, what is making him say, you're coming to train with us at 14? I think obviously like you know what it's like especially now more than ever like there's hype around players do you know what I mean there's hype especially through social media like if you put a couple of clips together like if I, I don't know if Arsenal won a club then Tottenham and, uh, and Liverpool everybody wants that kid mm -hmm. but before social media you have to go see the player do you know what I mean so I feel mm -hmm. like I had a name when people come to watch me they saw the proof and so if Palace was in the championship not the club they are now so in order to kind of hold on to young talent they had to push them Showed them as a route to the first team. Yeah. So I remember like Gary is the under eight, under 18 manager who's still at the club now, done an awesome job at Palace. He said, John, you know, you could be up with the first team tomorrow. I was like, Oof, bring it. I'm on it. Yeah, bring girl, it. You're like in year nine or year 10. Yeah, it's in year nine. Yeah, that's nuts. Yeah, it's nuts when you think about it like that. Yeah. Bro, you know, sometimes when you're in the frame, you can't see the picture. Mm. And I was in it. You just, just, just my reality. My reality. Mm. I used to get day release from year 10 onwards, or it might have been year 9, I think it was year 10. We used to do work experience and stuff, I remember, I think it was year 11. Mm. Um, but anyway, I used to get two half days off a week to go and train with the 18s and first team from young. So that, that was, even in school, like, it really affected how I was in the class. I was like a grown man in class, bro. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, I just knew, like, I, after this, I'm going to train with men. I have got, I, I know where I want to go. If you want to throw pens around in the, in the classroom, then by all means do it. But I've, I've, I've got to be somewhere. I've got destiny to chase. Really? So, so you were focused even from then? Like you knew the... Because Lukaku said the same thing. He said mm -hmm. he was at school and then mm -hmm. afterwards he's training with Anderlecht. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's all mad. How does that... Was you karma? Was you hype? Was you cocky? What was your whole thing attitude during that time? Mm -hmm. I think um, the way I was raised was always to be humble. Um, I was raised in humility. However... When you got a gift, it can make you it can make you proud. Um, so, like for example, I remember the first day of secondary school. I don't know about your school, but my school, the playground's open to everybody. What school was it? What school was it? I went to a school called London Art School School in Waterloo. Okay. Um, most of the schools I wanted to go to, I didn't get into. Um, yeah. Even I did, I got good sats. I didn't get into it because of my location. Anyway. Yeah. I went to London Art School School on the first day of school. So normally the year sevens get picked upon like you like you're just. Yeah. You're just, you're just, you're just weak, yeah, you know? yeah. Unless you've got that big brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't have that. So in the pecking yeah. order, only thing that can really save you is talent. Football, let's, let's just be honest, football. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fight. So in the first day, I remember, of, uh, of the secondary school, lunchtime comes. And there's always one ball banging around. One ball. So like year 11s are hogging it and that. The ball comes to me. Year 11s so give me the ball. But I said, come, I said, come get it. It came to me. And I did this move. I dragged it back, put it through his legs, got the other side, and the whole playground just... Yeah. 
And ever since that day, like you have the respect to the school. So yeah. like, you know, from young, like if you have a talent, it can, yeah. it can, it can gas you up, you can get proud. Um, for me, I just, I just had a lot of belief, bro. I had a lot of belief. I knew that football was my ticket out. It's what I wanted to do, it's my passion. So I just chased it, just chased it. That is beautiful, man. So you're then called and you go into the first team, yeah? Um, explain to me how that session starts and how it goes at the age of 14. I can't, I can't remember the session. Um, I can't remember all of it, but I remember Ben Watson. He's actually my teammate yeah. now. Yeah. He said to me, what year you born? I said, 1992. He went, making me feel, feel old. And he was only like, I must have been five, six, five, six, six, old, five, six, six, seven years older than me. And he was young himself. He was young. He was, he was young. And so, you know, I remember the session. I used to get, I was, but I wanted the ball. Like, I, I wasn't hiding. So give me the ball. I just, there's something about youthful exuberant, youthful, like, fearlessness. Sometimes you can learn fear in football. As a kid, you're not fearful of making mistakes. If, if me and you go and kick ball in the park, you're not worrying about mistakes. You just, you, you just play. Mm. But in football, because of the money, the pressure, mm. the politics, you can learn fear. Mm. Um, and actually, I actually learned fear after I left Palace. Um, but at that time, I'm like, I've got nothing to lose. They're pushing me. Give me the ball. Um, so, yeah, it was a, a bit, maybe a bit too much showboating involved, but I was free, you know. Mm. So um, I, I don't remember the session completely, but... And I was tall for my age. I wasn't small, small, you know, so I was tall. Didn't have a beard, but at the time I was tall. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I can't remember this the whole session but I remember it went really well and the boys were impressed wow I remember what I remember I know people are going to be like are well, you watching man's fires for bro but I remember you had your you, your legs were like they were there do you see what I'm saying and them things they make a difference they do bro they make a difference I'm Congolese so obviously us man mm. with this thingy legs I wish I was pushing doing the you know what I mean the leg presses from there because when I look at a player like Pogba you know, yes, he's tall, yes, whatever, but he's, the upper frame is usually what I call average. Like, anyone can compete with it. Mm. But when you look at the structure of the strength of the legs, and that, you know, it, play, it plays a huge difference. And I think you were, you were, yeah, developed from pretty young, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think I um, did a lot of training. Like, I think I, I would take, tell my wife sometimes, I'm like, I signed for Palace when I was six. I trained Tuesday, Thursday after, uh, evenings, Saturday morning, Sunday game for, for years. So, you know, you, you become what you do daily. So I was trained every day. So my legs just grew. It took a while for my upper body to follow. Mm. But, um, but yeah, man, I, I, was, I, I could hold my own. Even when I made my debut for Palace, I, 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 bodied, I bodied a couple guys. So yeah. I, was, yeah. I, I was ready. I was ready. That's that's great, man. And so, okay, so you're playing for your boyhood club, blah blah blah. Two thousand and eight is the year. Spurs come knocking. How does? What do you remember from from that? And I'm very interested in this because I just love to get into the mind of athletes. You're doing your thing. Things are, you know, going well. Your your name is ringing bells within the football community. Who gives you the call? What's the reaction? And how do you get over there? So I had so many offers, bro. I went on for years. Went on for years. Yeah. Um, I mentioned it before. I had offers from the biggest clubs in the world. Got to a point where me and my family decided that we best need to stay in London. Yeah. So that narrowed it down to the London clubs. Um, and it got to the point, to be honest, where, honestly, I wanted to stay at Palace. I wanted to stay at Palace. I wanted to continue my career there. But at the age of 15, there's only, only so much choice you have. You know, agents, family, who, you know, I look back and I do believe they had my best interests at heart. But you don't always know what's going to happen. Um, and um, I came home from school one day and they said, John, you've got to sign this contract. I was like, all right. Are you sure? Like, yeah, we sorted everything out, you know. It's Tottenham. I was like, all right. Oh, okay, cool. So, so family had already decided. Did you know it was Tottenham? Or was you... Was you... I, I, knew that, I knew that they were talking to Tottenham. I knew that like, it was moving quick. Tottenham, Tottenham put pressure. Put in a plan of development. First team, da 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 um, family stuff was sorted out and so it was kind of decided for me bro um and so I, I went with it you know when the people you trust and as a as a young impressionable man you have to trust the people that you think you can trust and so you know I it was kind of made for me but look Tottenham's a huge club it's a club where you know so many great players and so I thought you know go to develop go you know, try and bust first team mm. so yeah, it was it was it was made in faith. It wasn't made of, of in a bad in a bad way. I felt, mm -hmm. We felt we all agreed, and mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of was influenced to, to go to Spurs. 
So, because I just remember at that time, like, next thing you know, just news this, Johnny Bostock signs for, you know, I don't know, I don't like to talk into figures too much, but it was in between 750 or 1.1. I'm just hearing these numbers and I'm like, Mm-hmm. The kid's young, like raw, like obviously it was just intriguing. And a lot of us who have played football manager and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, we're obsessed. The nation is obsessed, you know, with young players and what they're going to do. So when you move across to Tottenham, um, mm-hmm. how does it feel like seeing your life change before your eyes? Because obviously it was one thing at Palace, but could you see the circus? Could you see what was going on? I could, only because of the uproar at my departure it was nuts bro it was so it was such an uncomfortable move i've had some uncomfortable transfers in my time but that was unprecedented only because i was 15 i just wanted to play football you know and so my chairman obviously my old ex-chairman simon jordan went, went, went completely you know was so vocal about his uh, opinion about me leaving and um yeah like the 750 the tribunal because went to tribunal so Simon Jordan won, I think, five million. Um, but because I was young, underage, I was 16, it went to tribunal, so it was out of his hands. So it just was on compensation, basically. So they calculated the years I was at Palace and gave them what they thought that was the base rate. So Simon Jordan, that was like, yeah, he, he went nuts. So that had that, I had Palace fans, I had, there was so much involved. Really? At the time, there was no social media, but there was forums. I don't even remember forums, but I, I used to go on forums. forums. Then people just type it in the thingy and they'll make a group conglomerate and yeah. I was death threats on forums and I was reading it, you know, so. And this is the thing, social media, at least now you can see people's faces, a little picture. Back then it's just a little username. Not always, bro. Not always. <laughs> Not always, bro. Not so always, bro. True. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. You're not right. always, bro. You know, you're right. It's just, so, that thing, it, don't even get me started on that, but yeah. yeah. You're right, yeah, keyboard warriors. But even in the midst of that, like, I, I, I was aware of the circus. I tried to blank it out. This is the time that I started to come to faith. Um, it's the first time I, I really started to um, understand who God was. And this, that was, the, like, literally, as I left Palace, and it couldn't have come at a better time because that whole period was... Pff, nothing could have prepared me for that. The weight of one, the kid's status, the weight of people's ex- expectations... Um, so yeah, it was there was a circus, and I was aware of it. But I tried my best to blank it out. You leave Palace, and obviously you're saying it's mad. It sounds to me like you're already a man in a, in a in a kid's body. If I'm to be honest with you, you arrive at Tottenham. Happy times um, when you go in there for a training session. Uh, I'm not here to name names. I'm saying, could you feel hostility between the other young youth players, or what? What's the vibes when you arrive there? Yeah, you know, I could, I could, um, I could, but I was like, I'm just, I've come this far, like, I'm, I'm going to come and, I'm going to come and just show what I've got. Um, all I've got to do is show my talent and I'll be in the first team. Do you know what I mean? So I actually started off training with the first team at 16, playing reserve games. And bro, I start off, I'm prolific. Like, I can score goals, but I'm not a goal scorer, you know. Um, I am a goal scorer. I speak it over my, I am a goal scorer. But, hey. you know, I, 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 I. I started off playing reserves and I'm, I'm, I score like seven in four, something like that. Nice. So, and then I make my debut for the first team at 16. But yeah, anyway, to answer your question, maybe we'll go into that. But to answer your question, there was a whole bubble of the, the kid prodigies here, you know, and there was other great players, Ryan Mason, Dean Parrott, who just got bought from QPR for two million, okay. Andrews Townsend, Steve Cork. There was a, a whole, uh, Danny Rose, Jake Livermore. Yeah. There was a, a, a lot of talent coming through um, and it was, competition was fierce. I, I, I sensed it from, from straight away. Like players thinking, how can you be 16 and going there and we're still in youth team or we're in reserves? Like, how can that happen? So, and I was still in, in the kids, in, in the kids, in the under 18s dressing room. So I go train with the first team and come back to the under 18 dressing room. So it was like hostility there, you know, it was, it was, it, it was, it was real. And you know, them, them times as well, you know, I always say kids could be mean, innit? You know, mm. like, I ain't all that. Man, man. Do you know what I mean? Or if, for example, you do something that's not great, I'm sure people are deep down inside. I saw Alan Shearer and Ian Wright talking on Match of the Day this week and, 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 and Lineker. And, and um, Lineker said straight, he goes, listen, man, when I was playing up front and I wasn't picked, yeah, obviously I want the team to win, but I want mm. for whoever's playing to have a stinker. Do you know what mm. I mean? Could you feel that 
uh, maybe from your youth team, but what about from the first team? Because that's a lot of pressure as well. That's someone's mm. spot, you know what mm. I mean? So could you kind of feel like people are trying to give you the welcome to a man's game type attitude or did they walk you through? What was it like? You know, honestly, the English boys were unbelievable. Yeah. Um, although those are my position, I could see that they were like, no, look, he ain't coming from my spot. He ain't, he, he ain't taking it. But the, like the others, like, for those who weren't threatened, obviously you're not going to be that threatened from a 16-year-old kid, but there was a lot of hype. Um, for those like Michael Dawson, Woodgate, Deadly King, um, Tom Huddleston, those guys were, Gareth Bell, was, they, were, they were unbelievable. They actually, well, the one player that, <laughs> that I remember in training, he, he said, I used to have this little thing, it was Luka Modric. We used to have, I remember like, I, I would do a step over something, you would like, you try and smash me, you try and, and I, I, I always thought, I need to show myself against this guy. Mm, mm. I don't know who this small guy is, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> he, he's serious. Because yeah. I just thought, thought right about the legs, like he's small, but he had these calves and yeah. he was reading the game. I thought, if I can improve against him, I can, I'm, I'll, I'll be all right, you know? And so, um, but yeah, the, the, bro, the competition was so fierce, Joel. Mm, mm. You know, you had, you had, Huddleston, Genus, um, Palacio, Modric, um, Rafa van der Vaart. You had just, just, just Nico Crenshaw. The midfield was just flooded. Um, mm. Ah, Didier Zakora. You just, there were 10, 10, 10 players ahead of me. So any chance I was going to get, I was going to try and take. But it was, yeah, it was. And at that time, no kids were breaking through, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah, it was tough. But I, I all took it as experience and tried to learn as much as I could. That's like a war. Do you know what I'm saying? What are the coaches saying to you during this time? Obviously, you've said you've banged in seven. You've played seven. Mm-hmm. And banged seven in four. My bad. Mm-hmm. What are you being told by the manager, coaches? What's the trajectory? What is, what's being said to you by the coaching staff? Yeah, so I came in under Juan de Ramos, um, Spanish coach. And the technical director was Damien Camoli. Mm-hmm. Now, shortly after... I signed, I'm not, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure exactly how long, training with the first team, that was the kind of the plan, in around the first team, playing reserves, kind of, because there was no development squad, it was reserves back then. Um, and so, they got sacked, Ramos sacked, Kamoli sacked, and so, it was a whole new infrastructure came quickly after. So, I felt like a little bit in betweeny. Like, where am I? Anyway, Harry Redknapp came in, and um, I made my debut under Harry Redknapp, but shortly after that, I don't know, because of numbers or because of whatever it was, they thought it would be best for me to go back to under-18s for a while. Man. That, 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 uh, mad. That, I was playing 18s from 14. I felt like I proved myself there. Yeah. But to go back to 16 and a half, 17, it was like... I used Not to go even, onto the pitch thinking like... Not even reserves. Every month. Huh? Not even no, reserves. Because I think the reserves didn't play every week. They played every... I don't even know what it was. They put me back in under under 18s and it was just like, it was, yeah, it was a huge blow for me. I felt like I proved myself then. It was, yeah, it was hard, really hard. And uh, during this time as well, you're obviously, what is England saying? Because you know, when you've got such hype around you, mm-hmm. you know, you've obviously, you've played at under 16s, you've played at under 17s more than anything. Uh, and then obviously the under 19s. What's it like when you're going there? Are you are you bossing it? Um, what's what's happening? I didn't have access back then to to watch, so mm-hmm. it's hard for me to to do my the, my due diligence research on that part. Sure, that's fine. So yeah. I made my debut for England 16s when I was 14. It was a victory shield, mm-hmm. which was um the, the like kind of cup they had once a year for the schoolboy kids. So I played that two years, a year up, year and a half up. After that, I signed for Spurs. Um, and yeah, I'm playing England 17th. I'm captaining. I'm captaining, the, I'm captain, I'm captaining them at the Euros. Come on. Um, and, um, and yeah, so I'm, I'm there. I'm one of the only kids who's in and around the first team. I know Jack Wilshire was in and around the first team, kind of at the same time. But me and him, I think John Joe Shelby, kind of. So no, that was my age group. But normally I played the year above. Um, so, so yeah, the likes of Jacob Mellis, um, Steve, Cork, Steve Corker, who else played? Um, a, num- a number of players. Jack Wadwell. Those are the kind of guys I, play, I used to play up, up here. So, yeah, I'm always the youngest, but I'm, I'm, I'm playing. So, I was always doing my thing for England. Um, but, yeah, England was an interesting one. It was a great honour, but, it, it come, it, yeah, it was... It came with... You always want to prove yourself against, against the best kids in the country. I mean, you want to show them that I'm better. I show them why I should be playing. 
But even there, there's that whole hostility thing. Like, nah, you can't. Let me show him. Let me let me show why he why he's just overhyped, or whatever. So, so yeah, uh, in, England was a huge one. It's tough being John. Yeah, it was tough <laughs> being you at young age. It's funny because I was chatting to uh, Zavin Hines earlier on today, and he's a yeah. good friend of mine because he's he's proper in his faith as well. Like, and. Um, mm-hmm. I just found him interesting because of the injuries. So I thought, I want to, you know, I'm talking to people for their different perspectives. And he said it was t- it's difficult for him because he had never even played any age group. So he was mm. thrusted in straight to under 21s. So you could always feel that, do you know what I mean? The extra pressure or the extra, he ain't done what I've done. How is he here? Or blah, 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 blah. But I guess that's where you have to be strong. So going back to Spurs really quickly, when does it look like, my time here is finishing. I need to go somewhere and play football. How does that come about? So I went on loan. First time I went on loan, I was 17. There was no... So I made my debut for the first team. Mm-hmm. Europa League. 15, 20 minutes, 16-year-old. Got the record there for youngest player. Then I played... Featured three more times, coming off the bench, getting Dynamo Zagreb, Shakhtar Donetsk, which was great. But then you need to play. Mm-hmm. And so I started to... I went out on loan to Brentford. Mm-hmm. Um, started off well there, then after I went on loan to uh, oh. Hull City, mm-hmm. went on loan to Sheffield Wednesday, Swindon, mm-hmm. Toronto, went on loan many, many, many clubs. Mm-hmm. Got to the point, bro, you start to question, like, why, why am I always being sent out on loan? Like, why? Mm-hmm. You got to question, like, I need a football in home. Like, mm-hmm. growing up alone, I'm a midfielder, centre mid, but I'm being shifted right wing. They're saying you can't do the other side of the game, you know, and, and stakes are high. You know, managers got jobs to keep. Mm. You know, so I felt like if I'm playing that position anyway, mm-hmm. if they're going to make a sub, I have the other one coming off. Mm. And so I'd be trying my best. And once you start striving in football, really trying too hard, you start, man, this whole pressure comes on to you and start thinking like, you start overthinking things. That's the worst place for an athlete, for anybody, mm. in any profession to be, you overthink things. You start, you start performing in a whole different mindset. So uh, times are, oh, if I don't play well today, I'm not going to be, that whole pressure, it's just, mm. So anyway, after a period of time, bro, went on loan several times and all great experience, but I'd never played, up until I was 21, I never played more than 10 games in a year. A whole season, never played more than 10 games. So it's like I never even had a chance, you know? Um, and because I came with the status of wonder kid, mm. I think I felt like the loan clubs were just expecting me just to improve their team rather yeah. than giving me a run of games. Yeah. Um, so anyway, 20, 21 now, and I realised they're not going to renew my contract. I'm thinking, hmm. So wow. you was there for a while, though, isn't it? Over yeah, all that. yeah, five years. Well, one contract. I finished yeah, one yeah. contract. Yeah. So I signed from Palace, signed five years, and that was the only contract I had. Mm-hmm. So, I, yeah, I finished that. And, um, well, my confidence was so low, Joe. Wow. So low, so low. Um, and I actually said, like, I prayed. I said, God, you know what? If you want me to come out of football mm-hmm. and go into full-time ministry, then tell me now. Because I'm ready. Wow. Wow. And, and, and the Lord actually said, no, John, now you're ready. I said, like, what do you mean now I'm ready? Like, I've been living for you. I've been doing things your way. I'm married. I'm you're trying to do this and do that. I'm putting you first. And now I'm ready. It's because football was like an idol in my heart. Like from the age of, from a kid, football was the thing that made me feel special, was my identity. It was the thing that I pinned all my hopes on. So when you lose that, or, you know, you, that whole foundation starts to shake, Man, like you have to have you, your life needs to be built on something solid. It can't be built on on, on on quicksand. And football, as much as I love it, it's not a foundation for you to build your whole identity upon. Do you know what I mean? And so, got to kind of humble me, take me through that process to realize that I got to build it on him. So I was gonna, I was, I was at a place where I was considering finishing. Then I realized I'm gonna do it his way. To let go, enjoy the game for what it is. Forget the old status of wonder kid, old pressures, the old media. Mm. And I went to Belgium. I went yeah, to Belgium. So that looked, so it looks like a huge step down. It weren't like Belgian Prem. Yeah, I went yeah. from Spurs, won the kid, mm-hmm. second division in Belgium. But I had a call from Jimmy Ford Hasselbank. He said, Look, John, just come and play. And that was like, that was like music to my ears, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And so I took the plunge. Um, even then, I, 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 I was driving around Belgium trying to train with clubs. That's, and well, some clubs said to me, No, you can't train. That's how big it got. I was actually sleeping outside of some clubs in the morning, waiting no to call way. me. And yeah. So why? Because they, they knew who you, well, they might have known who you were, but it's not mm. hard to research. Mm. Why are they saying no? I, I, 
I don't know. So I trained in Austin, mm -hmm. which is like which is close to the border uh, on Belgium, so close to English, close to close to England um, mm -hmm. in Belgium. Mm -hmm. Trained there, um, but they were in the Prem at the time, um, and I did really well. Um, and then I trained with Ant. No, went to go see Antwerp well, um, team with Professor Bank, and um, I went to another club called Leuven, OHL Leuven. Mm -hmm. So I went there. Mm -hmm. And I was sleeping outside the club in the morning, hadn't eaten nothing. I called the club um, because they were expecting me to come, but the manager was like, I don't want no wonder kid. That was his kind of reaction. Mm -hmm. Interested manager. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I could just come and train them. Like, really like, dismissive. I was like, well, I said, put me in this little room by myself with this little kit and stuff. I remember like, they kind of threw the kit down. I was like, wow, this is like a wake up call. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, can I have some food, please? I'm not even eating. They gave me a banana and that and some bread trained and I, I wasn't super fit at the time i just come back from injury like some ankle injury mm. so you can see my technique but i wasn't i wasn't sharp but it's pre-season mm. anyway mm. so um i trained the manager pulled me to his office up said i can see your talent but you should you should you should look in the mirror and slap yourself he said he said how is he many in english is he saying this in french is he saying he says this it, in... He says it in english he's flemish but he's okay. Said it in okay cool why are you even here you should slap yourself she's never been in a situation i was like I, I'm, you're telling me, I know that, so I'm trying yeah, to rebuild. Yeah. yeah. And he said, look, we can't offer your contract now, obviously you've got talent, but maybe, maybe another year. I was like, okay. So I signed for, I signed for Antwerp, went to Ginny, because he said, look, just come and play. Yeah. Or I played second division in Belgium. Oh, I just, I, I tore it up. I, I just yeah. played. No, yeah. weren't worried about no stacks, no agent, no media. I just mm. kicked the ball. Mm. Had a whole season there. I think I got like 25 assists. Mm -hmm. Guess who came knocking the next year? Yeah. Leuven. Leuven, back. The manager got sacked. Leuven said, John, come and sign for us. They just got relegated and wanted to go back up. So I signed for Leuven, one player of the division. We took them up by the playoffs wow. and then we were in the prim. So sometimes, man, it's, you just need to enjoy and persevere because that was an interesting one. So these are happy times in your career when people are probably mm -hmm. thinking, so you've gone from waiting outside, training, you know what I mean? Waiting outside for asking clubs to enjoying your football during this time john do you look and think i, I just want to crack at it in england again or are you just like you know what i don't know if i even want to go back to england i don't even know if you know i've, I've been treated well i don't know what's your mindset there I, I knew that kind of my name in england had been tarnished in, in a way mm. always had the chance anyway now and then i give someone else a chance nah, you didn't do it you didn't do it I can't do the other side of the game. Oh, he's a wonder kid. Must must be his attitude. That's that. That was always put wow. on my name. That came out quite early. It must be that they couldn't they couldn't question why. Why is the kid who had everything? Why is he not? They thought I oh, must be his attitude. People don't even know me. If you write one article in the paper, guess what? It sticks. You know. And so anyway, what they must be the attitude, whatever. So anyway, I left England thinking, let me go for a year and come back just to play and come back. That was my intention. But it went so well mm. that there was, I could see a path here. If I just keep playing, just keep enjoying it, there's going to be steps of progression available um, because I was literally being judged on how I'm playing. There was no pre preconceived idea of Wonder Kid or yeah, Palace yeah, or, yeah. or England. It was just, yeah. it's come from England. Apparently it was good. Listen, mm -hmm. so the club would just look at me just for pure 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. So, and me and my wife, we were enjoying it, settling into the culture. And it was, it was enjoyable, bro. So I just stayed out there. So you're, you're there and you're enjoying your football. Um, mm -hmm. Let me be real, bro. At this time, you're probably being Googled or wikied or whatever. If you're looking at it from someone who doesn't know, i.e. even someone such as myself, I'm thinking, damn, man, he went all the way to Belgium. Ah, and then, you know, he's in Lens. But mm. this is why I do this, because not knowing that this is the happy time of your life. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, this is the time when you're enjoying your football. You, you do very well there, obviously. You play a lot of games, yeah, um, for them. But then Lens come calling, mm -hmm. right? How does, that, how does that happen? And what's the joy? Are you, are you, do you want to leave? Do you want to stay? Because obviously you love it there. What is it? Yeah, I, I had interest from clubs, big clubs in Belgium, Stand de Liège and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it just wasn't really concrete. And I was like, mm, all right. We got, uh, we, I had a really good year in the first division. We nearly stayed up, but three, 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 three players really, really shone. Mm -hmm. And um, I was one of them. Um, and we had offers from other clubs. Now, Lons came in, or Lens, I was going to say Lons in French. Sorry, I, say Lons. Lons. I should That's know. Right. 
that's all right. Lons came in and honestly, I didn't want to go France. Mm. I didn't want to go France. I'm thinking, nah, man, I'm not really feeling France. But let, you know what? They've been banging off my phone. Let me just go and see the club. Mm. And my wife said, she said, John, I know if you're going to go see this club, you're going to sign for them. She, my wife doesn't even know football, but she had this sense and this spirit. I'm like, nah, trust me, I'm not. So I went to see the club, saw the stadium, saw the history. They used to play in, you know, Champions League. The stadium was used for the Euros, just gone, 40,000. that you, They normally get nearly sell out every week in even the second division. And I just kind of had an affiliation there. We're both trying to get back somewhere. And it was like, just the desire there, like, John, we want to build our team around you. I was like, hmm, wow. I'm going to sign, sign for Lons. Mm. And I looked at the trajectory of players who played in France before, in second division, Kante, Mares, uh, Giroud, so many players, like, they, they, there's, there's eyes on France. Yeah. So I thought, let me just go and play in France. And so, yeah, we, we took the plunge, bro. And you went, and I think that's interesting because obviously you're a married man. Um, it's all good. We, we get excited with the clubs. Um, but the quick one, you're, you're, you're a young married man, family man. How is the wife coping with all these moves and how is she supporting you? Mm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's her job. Everyone would argue that. But how, what's that like? What kind of position does that put you in as a, as a family man, a provider? Mm. It's tricky, bro. It's tricky because I think the preconceived notion is that footballers' wife just wives. Oh, she's a wife. Easy life. Mm. handbags, mm. restaurant, shoes, mm. holidays. Mm. And don't get me wrong, those things are available. Mm. But there's another side to it, man, the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Like, my wife wouldn't have chose to move 14 times in 11 years. Mm -hmm. we, were married, we were married nine, nine and a half years. We, we packed up the house dozens of times. Wow. You know, so there's no real base anywhere. You know, no real base. And so she's packed up everything. She sacrificed everything. But we have, there's been a, you go where you're celebrated. Do you know what I mean? As a footballer, you go where you're celebrated and not where you're tolerated. And I've been celebrated in those countries and those clubs. And so she's back behind me, bro. That's why if anybody's thinking about marrying a woman, like make sure that she's your champion. That she champions you because when when rubber hits the road, you need you need you need to help me. You need somebody who's going to get behind you and believe in you and be willing to sacrifice so that you can you know dream and achieve what you have in, in your heart. So she's been my best friend. There's been times you go to clubs and sign for new clubs, like we're walking to a flat apartment, we're like, this is home for the next year. Don't even know nothing about the city. We just signed. Yeah. yeah. So she's been unbelievable. Never made me feel, never, maybe, never made me feel, you know, um, never made me feel resent, she's never been resentful towards my career. It's been tough. Mm. She's got lonely sometimes, but she's been my ride or die, man. So as a, as a, as a, as a provider of the home, you feel like obviously I've got to provide and this and that, but, Ultimately, if you're enjoying your football and you're playing, that will, that will take care of itself. So, yeah, she's my partner, man. We've been through it all together. I can imagine praying together quite a lot. I can imagine. Bro, listen, I remember before I was a Christian, or even when I was a Christian, I was like, look, let me just find one nice girl who looks nice outside church and then bring, it, and then bring her to church so she, so she believes a bit and then she'll be all right. Listen, when I got over that kind of whole thinking, I said, look, God, I want the wife you have for me. Yeah. And I kind of I stopped searching. Yeah. This beautiful girl came out of nowhere. Mm. And the way that she started speaking, I'm like, wow, this is not just a girl in church. This is a girl who loves God. That's and I was yeah. so attracted to her, bro. I was like, because yeah. don't get me wrong, I, I think we all want a beautiful woman who are attracted yes, to yeah, yeah. you. want a wife who can pray for you when the times, when the times mm. are low. Listen, mm. I tell you this, my wife's believed in me sometimes more than I believed in myself. Wow. Do you know what I mean? So that has been so encouraging, man. So. Yeah, when, when I win, she wins. You celebrate together, man. Big up, Mrs. Bostock. That's yeah, a Mrs. big Bostock. one right there. I can't yeah, lie. I'll make sure she watches this so I get some more brownie points. Yeah, man. no, it's true. But you know what? I'll be honest with you. I'll talk to you offline and I'll tell you why I steered towards that. But that right there is a, is a big one. And people need to hear that as well. Um, okay, so you, you, you do good at Lance, pardon. What's your French like? Yeah, come on. Pas très mal. Moi aussi, ça va. Tu es congolais, congolais. Ouais, ouais. Tu parles Lingala? Bon, les c'est pas trop bon, mais on essaie. <laughs> mais je comprends, je comprends tout. Alors, pas de souci. <laughs> okay. Alors, um, I was going to carry it in French. Um, so you, you're at Bursa, uh, Bur, is it Bursa Support? Or how do you Bursa say that? Bursa Support. Bursa yeah. Support. Why such a short period before? So I was at Lons. Yeah. So sorry, bro. I was at Lons, and we were on the cusp of winning promotion. Mm -hmm. 
And the last day of the, of the, of the, of the season, we fell short by one point. It was a nuts. It was, it's never, been, never happened like that before anyway. We missed out. I, I won player, of the, player of, the, of the season award for the whole division. Um, and I had offers. So I had offers. I had an offer from... Yeah, anyway, I had offers from all different sorts of countries. And, um, where? Where? We want to know. You've you already so, given us detail. So I had offers from, from France. I had offers from Germany. And one big, big offer from Israel. Now, I didn't even really want to play in Israel, but they were the only, the club there was only was willing to pay what Lons wanted, which was, uh, which was four million. Lons wanted four million. Now, I'd only been there for one year. They bought me for 150,000. And so, anyway, money's money. So this club in Israel were willing to pay uh, that money. And I didn't really want to go to Israel, um, not disrespect to Israel, but um, the, the team was playing Europa League. And I thought, you know what? Let me, I, want to, I want to play in Europa League again. So anyway, Lon said no to the deal. Um, so I'm at Lon's now. I've got my last year of my deal, contract now. And I'm playing. My manager gets sacked. Then um, I said, look, I'm not going to sign another deal. Obviously, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here to play for the end of the season, whatever you want. But I'm not going to sign another deal. I said, okay, if you're not going to sign, you're not going to play. And I was like, all oh, right, well. So I started playing and they kind of put me on the bench and stuff. And so that I was out of the team because I wasn't going was to sign a new deal. So January came now, and um, because Lons has already said no to the four million in the summer, um, January came and Bursaspor came in with an offer because I was going to be free in the summer anyway. So Bursaspor signed there, and yeah, Turkey was interested, man. Turkey was an amazing experience. I would have liked to stay there longer, um, but uh, Toulouse came knocking. My old manager from Lons got the job in Toulouse, oh, the really? Premier League in France. Yeah. And he said, John, do you want to come and play? I was like, I'm going back. I'm going back to France. Yeah. When I left Spurs, I said, I said, when I decided to stay in football, I said, I'm going to give myself five years to get to a top five division in, 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 in world football. Yeah. Now, of course, you've got Germany, obviously England first, Germany, Spain, Italy. And I think we could all agree, France is probably fifth. Yeah. I thought, this, this is my goal achieved. One of my goals achieved. So when that came, I said, look, best sport, I love, I'm enjoying being here. Um, there were some issues with the finances, like, uh, which happens in Turkey. Um, but we left on really good terms and I signed, for, I signed for Toulouse. So that's the reason why, even though it was only four or five months, it was yeah, a quick turnaround. Man, that was nice of him as well, too. I, I'm sure there's other stuff that we don't need to talk about that influenced it, but it was yeah. good that he was able to make the move. So you're planning to lose. Uh, I'm, you know, you're playing games under your old manager, but somehow you're back in the UK, bro. Like, and for me, that excites me because I just feel like, look, we, I know you're still there and there's still a lot to do. We're, we're not getting super excited, you know what I mean? Um, and I know your, your feet are level on the ground. But for me, as a, as a fan, I get excited because I think, look at the journey. You see what I mean? Like, you've gone all around the world, all around different places, and you are back playing with the likes of Ben Watson mm -hmm. you, to lose to Nottingham Forest. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? But honestly, so it was my family's desire to come back to England for, for a while. I think when you're married, it's called, when you've got a kid, it's different. Oh, really? Your priorities change. Um, and if, you know, if, if, if it was down to me and my wife, we would have just gone around the world, Italy, had office from all over, just continue to play Portugal, wherever, wherever it may be. But um, yeah, your needs change. And so um, for family reasons, we really wanted to come back to England. Um, but for years, the door wouldn't open. Even after I won the second division player of the year, not a sniff. So obviously God had other plans, but I said like, now my family need it, God, like, open the door. Open the door for us to come back. Mm. And um, my wife had a dream and uh, that I signed for a team in red. Um, and so transfer window comes, not a sniff, bro. Last week, a transfer window comes, Monday. I get a call from a team in red, deal falls through. Wednesday, I get a call from another team in red, deal falls through. Saturday comes, day for transfer window, it finishes. Get a call from Forrest. John, you want to come and sign? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was just God's timing. It was God's club for us. Um, and... Um, to be back after six years away, bro, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's really, really, really is nice as a family. To have family come and watch games. People don't realise that. Like, yeah. people, my, my parents, my friends, my sisters, like, they don't watch, they can't watch me. 
TV is different, but yeah. to kind of watch me physically, see me in a player's lounge after, it's just different. Yeah, yeah. So these are the things that you really miss. And so to be back here now, it's, 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 it's lovely, man. No, that's, that's great. Obviously, with um, the, the whole situation, there's still a, you know what I mean, hopefully the football gets back to normal and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, Joe, I don't even want to take up more of your time. I'm just so happy that it's, it's, a, it's a good story. And regardless of what happens from here, I think one thing that the viewers can appreciate, uh, even if you ch change just one person's life watching, besides the entertainment itself, is that not giving up is mm -hmm. there's something in perseverance that money can't buy. Do you know what I mean? And just know that maybe at times you might not have felt appreciated. Maybe at times you might have thought that people have forgotten you. But there's guys out there like me, bro. Like, I'll be honest with you. I've been blessed to I interview the best of the best, bro. I'll be honest with you. And, and it's a mad blessing. I'm also a football fan. So mm -hmm. there's times when I sit there and I go, what happened to my guy who was whatever? And I'm just so happy that you, your career is doing this because it deserves it. And, and you've, you've, you've been able to explain things that maybe a lot of other people might not have known. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, respect to you, respect to your wife, respect to your family. And um, before I go though, Ball is in God. You got to tell me what that's about, bro. Like, what is Absolutely, that? About? Absolutely, bro. So I was playing in Belgium. Thank you for what you just said, by the way. But it really means a lot, man. Um, I learned along the way, bro, that if you if you live for people's acceptance, you'll die by their rejection. And so, like, I, that's what I used to play for people's acceptance. But the thing is, if you're not being accepted by them, you feel like a failure. So I've realized that I'm only living for one, I'm playing for one, for the glory of God, and that's where I find real freedom. So even what you're saying. It really means a lot, bro. But I, I'm playing for him, and I, I've that's 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 kept me and got me where I am now. Um, but in 2015, I was playing in Belgium, Leuven, second club in Belgium. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing in this small city, um, um, and I think I'm just like have my son I'm just got to be born, and I just got plugged out. Like sometimes, like as, as 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 men, you need to be plugged into community, people around you, friends around you, building you up, encouraging you especially as Christians, like you need to be, be running people around you that are encouraging you. I felt plugged out and I was like, it's tricky to get to church on Sundays because the schedule, Wednesday, midweek service, it's not possible, language and stuff. It's just tricky. Mm. Praying about it. God, like what? I need, I need some, you know, what, what should I do? And I felt the Lord say, start a movement for Christian players. I was like, hmm, I like that. So anyway, I spoke to a couple of the boys I, I met along my journey, playing different countries and stuff. I said, bro, like, would you be down for like, Online meeting, Christian players, just talk about real things, real things, like not just football, yeah. real, real things. Yeah, man, I'm down. We met, bro, for the first time ever. Four of us. It was biggest breath of fresh air. We cried, we laughed, we read the scriptures, we prayed together. We just, it was real because we all know what we're going through. And so that's how the meeting was. That was the inception. Um, fast, it just grew like wildfire. Players told this player, come, this player, come. So it grew so quickly, we had to start meeting weekly. Fast forward five years later now, we have uh, over 100 players playing in 12 different countries. Um, and we've got three groups, one English, one French, and one Dutch group. And so basically, we meet every week. Every morning, we pray together online. Every morning. Every players morning. around the world. Yeah, every morning. From, yeah, every morning, we pray. 7 till 7.30, play, pray, players are jumping on Zoom, we're praying together. We've got two meetings a week, uh, another meeting sorry, on, 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 uh, later in the week where we have like a, a deeper session where we study the word, the player will share the word, pray together, talk about temptations, struggles, mindset, everything. And it's family. You know, it's a movement where it's not, it's not been done before in football, where it's from the players, for the players. Because don't get me wrong, like we need parents, friends, pastors, but nobody understands what it's like as a player, being a player in the changing room, going through ups and downs, injuries, struggles, temptations. So what we do, so to come alongside players and say, bro, I know what you're going through, man. And God's got a plan for you. And like, you know, here you can grow in faith. So bro, players come in and they're just so blessed and it's just so real. There's no mask. You can be you. So um, yeah, man, it's really grown. It's helped me. It's been such a blessing to me. And even what we were saying earlier about like reasons, like I, I've been through everything so I can actually sympathise with what guys are going through. Well, guys in the group that haven't got a club, I didn't have a club. Well, guys in the group who are wonder kids, I was a wonder kid. Guys in the group who want to give up. Do you know what I mean? Every uh, injury, I've been through it and I realise I've gone through what I had to go through and it's not even for me. 
Because what's being built after me is going to go on after me. Look, bro, there's going to be a million players before me and after me. Mm. Better careers, better looking, uh, better, more money, more awards. But I've got a small segment here to impact people and say, look, you're more than a footballer. The world will celebrate your performances on Saturday and weekends, but you're more than that. First of all, you're a child of God. He loves you unconditionally. You're a husband or future husband. You're a father or future father. And you're a person. Don't get me wrong, football is what you do, but it's not only what you are. You know, so to have this movement where players can come together and encourage each other, we're just like a family, bro. So we've been going, we've been moving, and God's been really adding. So, yeah, man, I, 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 I realised that, you know, this is part of my purpose and, I, and, and, and I'm loving it. John, I did not. I, honestly, I knew it was a great IG page, but that's yeah. what I based it on. But yeah, yeah. telling me that, yeah, <sighs> right. Yeah. Nah, man. You see you? <laughs> glory to God, bro. I know what you're going to say. I knew you was going to say glory to God. Yeah. I knew you was going to say it. But it's, mm. it's, it's, um, I don't know. You haven't asked for it. I don't know how we can support you. But if, mm. if there's a, 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 a natural way, believe me, without you even asking, we're going to support you somehow. I'm telling you. Yeah. And then when the time is right, it will happen. But John, I have to respect your time and say thank you, bro, for your time. Uh, you know, I mean, this has been probably the most exciting one. I've, I've had the chance to speak to all types of guys. Sorry for everyone watching, if you know what I mean, but it's just a different one here. I can't even lie. It's a little bit different. I still love you a lot, but it's a different one. But, uh, but yeah, um, I look forward to keeping an eye on your career and just when you got people reposting your stuff now, don't get vexed from Nottingham Forest. That'll probably be the Cheeky Sport account supporting you. Because we're biased like that, you get me? Oh Bro, God. have a good one. Stay blessed. I'm going to call you after this, but I have to lock off the Zoom. But um, I'll drop your message and then we'll go from there. Peace, bro, keep doing what you're doing, bro. You're inspiration. Thanks for having me, man. Thank you. Peace. Thank you. God bless.